Hey guys, I want to do just a quick run through. We weren't able to record the Google Hangout. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to just run through this scenario with you guys that weren't able to attend to make sure you understand what's going on in today's assignment. So this is the first part of our summative. We'll have uh, this part today where we're really gathering the information. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll have a second part where we do essentially a claim evidence reasoning with the data that we gather today. So it's really important that we do a good job today to set ourselves up for tomorrow because this is the summative for our biodiversity unit. So if you read through here, it talks about Shell City. Uh, and this is a fictional town, and, uh, and essentially what it's telling you here as you read through is that back in the day, it was a fishing community, and that they live here, and there's this really nice coral reef, and the coral reef supports all this different type of animal life and a, a big degree of biodiversity. Uh, and you guys have seen this in like nature documentaries and stuff like that, that biodiversity is like massive at a, at a coral reef because there's all kinds of different habitats and, and organisms that live there and roles that they fill and all that. Uh, but recently, Shell City has started uh, becoming a farming community. And so now they are um, going to be uh, farming, they're going to be putting fertilizer on their crop, and that those fertilizers are based in phosphorus. Uh, and that's really important that we know because part of the data we're looking at is phosphorus that gets dissolved in the water. Uh, and that phosphorus is going to play a huge role. And so it talks about the fact that... Um, they start to notice after they've been farming that there's algae growing on the surface of the water around the coral reef. And so algae is an invasive species and this is not good. So we know invasive species are bad um, from our reading and our stuff from before spring break. And so it says this photosynthetic algae lives on the coral. There's good algae that lives on the coral and it, uh, it's a food source for the coral and stuff like that. But the surface algae is what's new. And so on the top of the water, and you guys have seen this like in a pond, like just covered over with this green algae kind of floating on the surface. And that's what's happening here, that you have this algae on the surface and it's blocking the sunlight out from the good algae that's on the coral. And so that surface algae blocks the sun, grows and blocks out more and more sun from over top of the coral reef. And that's a bad situation, all right? Uh, and so we're gonna be working to explain this um, as we go through um, tomorrow. Um, but today we're mainly just looking at the data. So as you come down here, you have a data table for three different sites, site one, site two, and site three. And so you look at the dissolved phosphorus, that's really the amount of fertilizer in the water and that's measured in megagrams per liter. It's probably supposed to be milligrams um, per liter because that would be insane. Um, so that's probably supposed to be a lowercase m, so milligrams per liter. Um, and so that's how much there is per liter of water. Um, and then you got the size of the coral reef. You have the amount of surface algae that's there. You got the number of species, different species that live there, excluding the algae and the number of organisms that live at the site. All right, and you have that for all three of the sites. And so you're gonna come down here with that data and you're gonna go through and you're gonna talk about how are these abiotic components changing? How are the biotic components changing? And so here's the deal. The only abiotic component of this ecosystem that we're looking at here in our data is the dissolved phosphorus. And so you're gonna look at the phosphorus and you say, okay, at site one, you'll go down here and you'll say site one, there was no phosphorus in year one. There was zero, okay? 0, 0.00 milligrams per liter of phosphorus. But over the five years, what do we see happening? That it increases a little bit to 0 0.05 and then goes back to zero and then increases. And so that's essentially what you'll write there. You just summarize that data and say, this started out with this amount, uh, went here, ended here. Just a general summary of how the phosphorus is changing. So we'll see a bigger change at some of the other sites. And we'll talk about that in our site two box and our site three box, all right? But the biotic is gonna be a lot more detailed, okay? Because there's four things you're talking about. The size of the reef is biotic. The amount of algae is biotic, the number of species, and the number of organisms are all biotic. So I would recommend that you come down here and you just put four bullets in this box. And so you can just click right here to add bullets. Um, and so you can say the size of the reef. Okay, for all the sites, we're gonna see that the size of the reef is decreasing. So I would say between years one and five, the size of the reef decreased from 65 down to 63. Uh, and you can be a little more detailed for site one. It started at 65, in year three, it decreased down to 63 and stayed that way through year five. And so uh, you can talk about that as you go through, talk about each of these components, 
that are there, all right? And so then you got to compare the change that happened to the three sites and describe their cause and effect relationship. So the main change that we see here in this environment is going to be caused by this dissolved phosphorus. And so we'll work out a claim and stuff tomorrow. Uh, and I'll probably give you the sample claim for your claim evidence reasoning. But down here, what I want you to do is to talk about which sites had the most phosphorus. Did you see the biggest change of those biotic components there? So you can go through, you can say, this is how the biotic changed, this is how the abiotic changed, and all that. All right. So I'm going to be available for you guys through email, through Google Classroom. Um, and you guys just contact me, um, send me a message through Remind, whatever, and I'll be able to help you guys um, to do this. And if you're available every Monday and Wednesday, we're going to have a Google Hangout for Science at 10 o'clock in the morning. That's the time scheduled by the school. If you specifically are struggling, though, and you want some extra help, you and I can set up a Google Hangout um, to kind of talk through some of this stuff as well. So contact me if you have questions. Do a good job on this because it is a summative grade um, and uh, it's really going to be important for you tomorrow. So uh, good luck. Um, take an opportunity to get outside today if you can and, um, and just enjoy the day. Thanks.